In today's episode, I'm going to 3D print a light bulb and even reproduce the Edison light bulb in a jar. Stay tuned to see it on today's Film of Friday. I recently visited Greenfield Village in Dearborn, Michigan. It's right next to the Henry Ford Museum where the Detroit Maker Fair is held every year. I visited Thomas Edison's Menlo Park Laboratory. And upstairs you can see the fixture where he tested his first light bulb. Outside the laboratory is actually a very interesting story. In this shed that's off to the left, that's where he had an employee burn oil lamps all day long. Those oil lamps would burn and form a soot on the ceiling and that soot was carbon. That carbon would get scraped off and that's what he used to make the filament. He'd use thread with carbon and cook them together and make the filament for his light bulbs. So this inspired me to reproduce an experiment I did many years ago. I took some picture hanging wire and I took a strand out of it about three inches long and shaped it into a filament. And then I clipped this filament between two test leads. Now these test leads are mounted on top of a jar lid because I'm going to enclose this inside a jar. Now one of the things that Edison did is he would create a vacuum inside his light bulbs and that allowed the filament to last longer because without oxygen it's it's not going to burn. So I do it in a simpler way just with a candle and then seal the jar and the candle will actually burn up the oxygen, at least most of it. And once the candle goes out then I can power up the filament and it should last a little longer. And so I powered it up, you can see a little bit of sparking and there it is, a really crude Edison light bulb. Now of course today we have LED light bulbs and they're very common everywhere. So I decided to 3D print my own light bulb design and here it is. It's got a semi-transparent bulb and a black base. Inside I used a super bright jumbo LED resistor to limit the current and a 9 volt battery. Now it's not super bright but it was fun to build. Let me show you how I did it. I searched Thingiverse and there were several different light bulb designs. This one by Evan Erickson was perfect and it had a base but the base was actually designed to go into the bottom of the bulb because this bulb was really big. So I found if I reduce the size of the bulb shape by 50 percent it actually fit into that piece as a base <laughs> perfectly all the way around. So that's what I decided to use as my pieces to build my light bulb. Now I did modify the base. I put a bottom on it and then I added these posts and then like a little box area to hold the 9 volt battery. So let me click on group so you can just see what I did. It's really simple. Just two posts and I put a slot at the top to hold the LEDs and then just a bunch of, bunch of box elements to form the clips so to speak to just hold the battery in place. The bulb shape I could import right into Simplify 3D for slicing. I just needed to reduce it by that 50%. So that's what I did. And you can see here it's at a 50% scale. And so this fits on my MP Select Mini 3D printer, which is what I'm going to use. But I needed to support the top of this because the first time I actually printed this, it went all the way through, but the top didn't fill in. I had a big hole at the top. So I didn't print with support, so I went back use the support tool in Simplify 3D, generated automatic supports, and then just removed the existing supports that are going into the wall because I wanted this to be easy to break away. I could only get to it from the bottom. So this is what I did, this is the way it looked, and I think this will work out perfect. So once I had that in place, now I just need to go through and do the slicing settings. So I clicked on Edit Process Settings, chose the mono price select mini profile that I have. I'm using PLA, 25% fill. I did a layer height of 0.2. Um, additions here, I did use a raft because I wanted that support to stick to a raft. I used an infill of the 25%, like I said, and I do have to use su check supports here because I'm using that. 40 degrees on the bed, 205 in the extruder. This thing was ready to slice. So I clicked on prepare to print. And this took a little bit longer because of all the rounded edges but when it was done it looked pretty good and when I scrolled down here to see how it looked I could see that the support structure was fitting together and building exactly the way I wanted it right in the center and this should be easy to remove 
So now it was ready to send to the printer. So it lifted off the bed easily. I just needed to break away the raft and the support. Now this material is actually a transparent PLA that I used on my Da Vinci Junior. The Da Vinci Junior said this spool was out of filament, but it clearly wasn't. It was enough to print this bulb and actually another one. So this is why I don't use my Da Vinci's as much. But to get the support material, all I did was grab a hold of it with my side cutters and I just needed to twist. So once I got towards the middle, I just twisted it and it broke away. And I'll tell you what, this printed really nice. That support just broke right away from the top and it looked pretty good. There's a little bit of different coloring between the top and the bottom. A little bit clearer on top actually. But I was pleased the way this thing uh, printed. So next I imported the base into Simplify 3D to print it on the Select Mini. And I used very similar settings as the, the bulb. So 25% fill. Layer height was slightly different. I did a 0.25 versus a 0.2. Um, the infill was 25%, like I mentioned, no supports, no brim. And temperature wise, it was the same 40 degrees in a bed, uh, 205 in a hot end. And I sliced this. And once it was sliced, I checked it just to make sure everything looked good, but you know, it looked fine. Uh, this isn't a tough print here. So I sent it off to the printer. I have all my pieces, the bulb, the base, 9 volt battery, and here's the circuit. Ground connected to the negative side of the LED, positive side to a 220 ohm resistor, and then back to positive. And when I connect it to the battery, it glows. Now it's not super bright, and I didn't put a switch on this thing because this is just a real simple project. But I just bent it over, clipped it inside the little slots that I made, squeezed it all together, slid the bulb over the top and could easily see this wasn't super bright but once i put it in dark it made for a nice night light so i did it i 3d printed my own light bulb makes you wonder i wonder what thomas edison and his crew would have been able to do with a 3d printer so that was fun and it printed really well on this mp select mini i continue to be impressed with this printer that's under 250 dollars it's not perfect but no printer is but this has been really a surprise how good this thing is. So that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And even if you tune in every Friday, please subscribe. It tells YouTube you like what I'm doing here and helps the channel grow. And if you want to help support the channel, I just ask for a dollar a month. There's a link up here somewhere. It takes you to my Patreon page, and a dollar a month goes a long way. It really does. Oh, don't forget, I still have my 10K celebration going on. Uh, when I get back from New York Maker Fair, I'm going to draw the winner. So it's a giveaway for a TiVo Tarantula 3D printer kit along with a couple other prizes. So there'll be a first, second, and third prize for sure. All you do is you go to the link in the description of this video, enter your email address. Now it does sign you up for my newsletter and then get you entered into the contest. So I'll be drawing that soon. So that's it for this week. I'll see you next time on Filma Friday. <music>